I'm Nicola Talent and you can listen to my brand new podcast, Beast, The Murder of Nora Sheehan, streaming now, wherever you get your podcasts. I sent you a little list there for you to choose something for your Christmas present yes. on last night. Yeah. We'll come back to it, but have you looked? Well, I, I have looked, but I don't know whether to choose the, the Rolex or the Hublot. Is it yeah. Hublot? Is that even how you pronounce it? Or Brett Lung? I wouldn't think it's Brett Lung. <laughs> what is it? Bright Lung? I'd say so. So though, like they are the... And I wouldn't say it's Lung, is it? Well, I don't know, Nicola. It doesn't sound... Because I've never... My last watch was a Casio... <laughs> <laughs> I haven't worn a watch in years. I do have a watch at no. home, but I can't. Where's the batteries? But um, yeah, no, but anyway, have a look through. We'll come back to that, the yeah. list that we're referring to yeah. later in this podcast. Uh, and we'll go through a couple of the items that you could. Or even a Louboutin. Louboutin bag, is that right? It's definitely not Louboutin. Is it not? <laughs> Louboutin. No, it's not. No. Christine Louboutin. Louboutin? No? Louboutin is Louboutin. shoes. Louboutin. Oh, it's shoes, is it? Yeah. Well, I'll have some of them. <laughs> <laughs> They'd look nice on you. Yeah. Anyway, um, we're here to talk about dirty money. Yeah. And, um, you know, this is becoming kind of more prominent, I think, the women in yeah. the background who I've always had a bit of an interest yeah. in. Um, the women who are living off the proceeds of crime and then whenever anything comes up, they'll claim they thought that their husband was in the car business or was, you know, a brilliant gambler or whatever, but they live these luxurious lifestyles. And more and more, I think they are being, they're coming before the courts and they're getting custodial sentences, which seems to be a way that um, there's a bit of a crackdown on it here, I think. And I know that the DPP has certainly, you know, recommended this sort of record number of charges around money laundering, this huge amount of money laundering charges, very interesting cases before the courts that we'll get to when they come on. But um, Heather McNamara, a 40-year-old woman from from Ennis. Tell us about her and what happened. Well, I mean, you're right that that there's there's they do seem to be bringing criminal charges. I mean, back in the day, CAB would seize money from people's bank accounts, the partners of drug dealers, and that would be the risk that they faced would to have the seizures just taken off them. But Heather McNamara is an example of somebody who's, she was convicted this week and um, given a total of 50 months prison sentence with I think 32 suspended and she's going to serve then 18 months probably do a full year in jail year at the very jail, least yeah. so this um, she, her partner is a guy called Paul Colopy and he's probably a classic example of uh, a big fish in a small pond he would have been probably one of the most prominent drug dealers. I think he was described in court as one of the uh, the big players in the drug scene in County Clare. So County Clare would be like a quite a large number of towns there. And you're talking about somebody who would have amassed, like you're talking mid-range level money, mm. um, you know, who would have dealt with those, some of those Limerick Gangs. Is he one of the colopies of Limerick then? He's Just, not he's not no. exactly one of the colopies, though. I'm not sure if there is a his relationship or whatever. But it's not he's not Right, because that name Colopy is obviously synonymous with the gangs of Limerick. Yeah, but this is not there yeah. there may well be a, a sort of broader connection, but it's he's not he's not Maybe a, a name a, that's local for to It is area. it is it's a it's an it is a local name, but he is not part of seen as part of the, the Keen Colopy faction or anything like yeah. that. So, but he would have been a big local drug dealer mm. and County Clare would have been somewhere, it's a big county with a lot of money to be made. So he's obviously um, serving a 10 year prison sentence for cannabis stealing. Yeah. He was convicted in 2021. While he was convicted, he got, I think it was, it was, you know, something like 50,000 pounds worth of cannabis, which doesn't sound that big, but the judge came down on him so heavily because he was already serving three suspended sentences at the time. Nice. And also he was just one year out after serving a previous six years for uh, when a uh, heroin seizure of about 30, 40,000 was taken from him in his mm. possession. So you're talking, that's the sort of level of drug dealing you're so dealing with. he kept going with. back. I mean, suspended sentences can often be given because it's somebody's first offence maybe. Yeah. Or because they have... Exactly. Sort of so you're talking... Told the courts that they're going straight or that they're getting rehab or whatever it is. And he was also using one of the, uh, the classic uh, uh, manoeuvres, which was he was also running an ice cream van. 
So this has gone on for years, of course. Yeah. I mean, if there is there anything more uh, cash friendly than a than an ice cream van, you, you know. Well, exactly. Well, yeah, maybe uh, selling your cappuccinos could be a way to go. But yeah. ice cream vans have been one of the ways because it's an absolute cash business. I mean, who's going to know how much you're generating or not? Yeah. And it's a way to 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 show an income. And um, there's plenty of drug dealers have done it. And um, there's been uh, even uh, ice cream van wars, haven't there, over the years? Yeah. And yeah. there's you been must actually go over all that. Yeah, like it's interesting, you know. Yeah. Um, and of course. Actually, another one of the Col Keen Colopy faction, one of the senior members of, of of that gang was also doing it. So Paul Colopy, if you see the seizures, you're talking 50,000 cannabis, 26,000 pounds worth of heroin. So you're talk that's the sort of scale. You're not talking about maybe multi-millions, yeah. but you're talking about a very significant player in rural Ireland. And Heather McNamara was prosecuted after this, this week mm. for a sum of 37 point eight thousand in cash. So that's the sort of scale you're talking about, which is a lot and of that money. That was the proceeds of crime. She pleaded guilty to these money laundering to this money laundering offence, by the way. Yeah. And it was that money was sort of made up of cash found in raids May in in May twenty twenty one at two locations in Ennis, I think. Yes. And also there was an amount of uh there was a Rolex as well and there was she had a a, a previous conviction as well in 2014 concerning a sum of 68,000. And in the summation, Judge Comerford said that she had engaged in significant repeated wrongdoing. Yeah. And they also spoke about the sort of lifestyle she was living. Again, speaking about driving a Range Rover and other, you know, nice cars. She put up a spirited defence, put it that way, um, that her, you know, she's a very young child. Um, she also has uh, elder children and she basically put forward the thing that, that um, you know, that the children depend on her, they're very attached to her, they're going to be the ones that suffer. But the judge was quite strong saying she cannot use her children as a shield yeah. for her criminal wrongdoings and that she's going to have to go and serve a prison sentence. That was Judge Francis Comerford. Um, like interesting we, because I suppose that would have been in the past maybe enough to say that you're a mother and a young child, a two-year-old child, very young, yeah, um, who's highly reliant on her and the older children have lost their father, um, which we may come to uh, yeah. as well. But that would have nearly been enough for to guarantee you a suspended sentence back in the day. But they're no longer accepting these kind of... No, I mean, and you also... We, we had examples like uh, uh, Deirdre Brady, the... Yeah. The wife of Mr. Nobody, the famous uh, Kinnan cartel. Um, Much more Declan money Brady. involved there. Way more money. But it, they're still being pursued through the courts, yeah. these kind of cases. Like it was always a thing um, back in the day. Well, I didn't see where the money came from. So how do I know it was criminal proceeds? And that that was seems to have been a barrier that sometimes the TPP said, well, how do we prove that, yeah. that this person knew was knowingly um, was the criminal proceeds? But, you know... Deirdre Brady's case was interesting on a number of levels. Firstly, because she did get a suspended sentence. And yeah. that was appealed to the... And it was the Court of Appeal that found that she the original suspended sentence for helping to launder that €800,000 in cash was too lenient. Yeah. And that actually, funny enough, when that happened at the time, I remember getting some calls from interested parties who were sort of out there, shall we say, um, going, oh, that is really bad sort of sign for the... Yeah, the women, the malls, as we call them, um, because, you know, the Court of Appeal says a sentence is wrong. It's not good for a judge. It's not good for anybody. It's um, the reason I think a lot of judges take so long to go through well, the reasons yet. for their sentence and, and they, you know, they really sort of pour over them is so as they're not appealed or at least on appeal that they're upheld because that's their kind of like. Yeah, it establishes a, a legal precedent. Exactly. And that must can then be referred to in future prosecutions by by the prosecuting lawyers, um, and you know it is it is we see these money laundering charges. There's loads of them going through the courts for mm. for from the relatively small, which is these kind of scams mm. where people leave a bit of money in their account, um, you know, internet scams. But they're being prosecuted those money mules uh, very determinately. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, and the I message been sent out for sure yeah. um, on this. And of course, you see, 
the proceeds of crime are bigger than ever because yeah. the money coming in is bigger than ever from the drugs. So it's like, I mean, I recall the details of the proceeds of crime that were alleged proceeds of crime that were lifted out of Bomber Cavanagh's house yeah. in the UK. And there were something like 37 pairs of designer jeans. Yeah. There were all these handbags, there was shoes, there was clothing is so valuable now, which is what yeah. we're going to come to. So, um, you know, that's why the, these values are kind of increasing. You know, you're not sort of talking about a couple of hundred quid yeah. coat. You're talking about a couple. Of, do you know you can buy coats like for thousands? I do. I do. Now, so back to your Christmas list here. Right. So the Criminal Assets Bureau are having an auction, an online auction in December. Am I right? The first of December, I think. Yeah. yeah. Wilson's auctions are holding it. And they're going to put up the kind of the the guides on the lots next uh, week. But in the meantime, I sent it to you because I wanted you to have a little look through mm. to see is there anything there you want. Lot number one, a Rolex model, date just 41. Yeah. Uh, automatic dial, chocolate set with diamonds. Now, I don't like that. <laughs> okay. Because right? there's... Yeah, so that's lot number one anyway. We don't have the value on that yet. But do people go around wearing the Rolexes? That's, that's... Yeah, of course do. you wear your Rolex. What do you mean? Well, do you, like you go out to the pub wearing your yes, Rolex or course. what about if you you're... to show the world how if wealthy you're, if, you are. If you're going down to, you know, buy a tin of soup in the you evening. You wear your Rolex. Like, you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, most of these people have a collection. Sorry, these, by the way, are all seized proceeds yeah. of crimes, crime that the cases have either been settled or that they've gone through the courts. And so this is what, I mean, this is amazing. This is like, it's actually the 4th of December, I think that the uh, auction is on, but the Criminal Assets Bureau are going to sell all this stuff. So yeah. anybody looking for, you know, particular Christmas presents for particular people. I'm giving the Criminal Assets Bureau a great <laughs> advertisement here. Yeah, well, Wilsonsauctions.com. Anyway, you can have a one ounce gold bar. Yeah. Would you want that? Um, well, I could, yeah, if it's if it can be bought on expenses. Did you not look through this? I sent it to <laughs> I, you. Yeah, I did. I did. Now a Louis Vuitton Neo Neo handbag. Right. There's a diamond ring, three stones mounted in platinum. Now, wasn't one of those? Wasn't a diamond ring seized out of the home of uh, Liam Byrne? Wasn't it taken from the I hand was, of his yeah. wife, yeah. Uh, Simone McEnroe? Whether or not they got that back as part of the settlement deal there or not, I don't know. Um, tag Heuer, Gucci watch, a Gucci watch now. Yeah. And you could buy a Chanel wallet on a chain, pink. No, I wouldn't go out in that. How much That's is that? Does, for me it, does it have a guide price? Not yet. You see, next no. week the guide prices will go up, but I can tell you they're all probably thousands or so yeah. far. I don't, these watches, I mean, I think you need an education to know how much these are. Cartier um, watch. There's loads of watches. Another Rolex. A Louis Vuitton Palm Springs mini backpack. You see that? <laughs> I mean, you could buy that <laughs> yeah. in one of yeah. those deals shops. I never yeah. really kind of got the Louis Vuitton thing. Um, so, and there's, I think there's hundreds of lots. So you go through them, you you know, you can go. So have a good look over the weekend for me, will you? Yeah. Raymond Veal watch. Another diamond ring. Um, I did see a Canadian, a Canada goose. There's S a Montclair two-tone Harry oh, yeah. you Botto jacket, size six. Would that fit you? Um, probably not. You I'm look like a bit... real wanker. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought, I saw one thing that I, I know would humiliate my kids. It was a, it was a, a Canada goose. What's it called with the sleeveless ones? Canada goose. Gilet. 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 Yeah. yeah. I actually think, you see for those puffy jackets, yeah. I think you need to be quite thin. Yeah. But that, they do pack on the pack. Not That'd saying. be perfect for me then. Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at all this. There's yeah. an Audemars PK. Yeah. We've spoken about them before. Yeah. I mean, all these names and brands. There's another one ounce gold bar. I mean, that's just what an investment, is it? But gold, I suppose, yeah. It's an absolute rock solid investment, you know? Yeah. Um, particularly. So there's your Canada goose. Now, you're not one <laughs> in Parker. No, no. Either. No. No. I mean, I'm going to put my foot down on that one. But it, it's funny, like, how little it amounts to, doesn't it? And like a. How do you mean? Well, I mean, in a sense, this is what these people are putting, say, Paul Colopy there, serving 10 years yeah. in prison. Um, and these are the fruits of his labour yeah. for that risk. And I'll watch, do you know, yeah, know. which you couldn't, most, the vast majority of people couldn't tell the difference between a fake one bought on some cheap website. 
And they're See, putting, that's the value of this auction. At yeah. least you know that the stuff is real, real because I, I know of a lot of uh, cases where the Criminal Assets Bureau have seized stuff. They're actually getting quite good themselves at recognising the real things. And they've given them back because they're like, you know, rip-offs. Yeah. Yeah. So they're worth nothing. Um, but yeah, these will these will have been checked out and all the rest of it. Now, you have to, to go on, you know, to, to bid on this stuff, right? You have to actually lodge something like a thousand pounds deposit, which is refundable. Um, I would love to go to this auction. Will we go? <laughs> we should go. Absolutely. And you're going to have to hold me back from bidding on something. Well, maybe I do, buy like, something small. I, an auction, it just feels like betting yeah. on a horse. Do you yeah, know that way? Yeah. And like I would get excited if I wanted something and somebody else bidding against me and I would definitely go overboard. So, But nonetheless, it's online. I think we can't go along to yeah, the auction I think house. You, well, I think you can go along and view the... Well, let's do that. Before. Why don't we do that? Take, well, it, pod, it, take, take the podcast off site <laughs> and go and view yeah. everything. Because it is a kind of a, a different, you see this the, the, as CAB have developed in recent years. It is something that they're they're doing, isn't it? It's yeah. showing it off and, you know, maybe even doing a public auction, I think is the yeah. first time and certainly the first online one I can remember. For sure. Yeah. So, yeah, I wonder who will be bidding. But I suppose anybody who wants, you know, a perfect Christmas present for somebody, it's it's yeah. it's the way to go. So, look, let's do that, will we? Let's we will. Let's try and go and see the let's, stuff. Let's touch these watches yeah. and feel how heavy they are and stuff. Yeah, I'll I see if I can. that's about the only way we're going to get close to them, to be and honest with you. Yeah, well, maybe we can find a jacket. We're to, going to hit the big time one of these days and we're going to I'm be able to. I'm sure we can find a jacket to show off my slim but athletic physique, <laughs> as you've referred to so pleasant earlier on <laughs> ah, you know you're very slim <laughs> thank you Nicola right well listen let's leave it at that and we'll go bargain hunting next week let's do it I'm Nicola Talent and you're watching Crime World a podcast about criminals drugs and the underworld in Ireland and across the globe make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you can be the first to watch all our latest episodes. You can also listen wherever you get your podcasts.